Welcome to official DVSA, Driving Theory Test, 2022 Updated, UK. Question 1. What should you do before making a U-turn, give one answer. A. Check road markings, to see that U-turns are permitted. B. Give an arm signal as well as using your indicators. C. Look over your shoulder for a final check. D. Select a higher gear than normal. The correct answer is C. Look over your shoulder for a final check. Explanation. If you have to make a U-turn, slow down and ensure that the road is clear in both directions. Make sure that the road is wide enough for you to carry out the maneuver safely. Use your mirrors and look round to check it's safe before turning across the road. Question 2. Why is it dangerous to drive too close to the vehicle ahead? Give one answer. A. Your engine will overheat. B. Your mirrors will need adjusting. C. Your sat-nav will be confused. D. Your view of the road ahead will be restricted. The correct answer is D. Your view of the road ahead will be restricted. Explanation. Tailgating is the term used when a driver or rider follows the vehicle in front too closely. It's dangerous because it restricts your view of the road ahead and leaves no safety margin if the vehicle in front needs to slow down or stop suddenly. Tailgating is often the underlying cause of rear-end collisions or multiple pileups. Question 3. What should you do if you're being followed by an ambulance showing flashing blue lights? Give one answer. A. Accelerate hard to get away from it. B. Brake harshly and stop well out into the road. C. Maintain your speed and course. D. Pull over as soon as it's safe to do so. The correct answer is D. Pull over as soon as it's safe to do so. Explanation. Pull over in a place where the ambulance can pass safely. Check that there are no bollards or obstructions in the road that will prevent it from passing. Question 4. What type of emergency vehicle is fitted with a green flashing beacon? Give one answer. A. Ambulance. B. Doctor's car. C. Fire engine. D. Road gritter. The correct answer is B. Doctor's car. Explanation. A green flashing beacon on a vehicle means the driver or passenger is a doctor on an emergency call. Give way to them if it's safe to do so. Be aware that the vehicle may be traveling quickly or may stop in a hurry. Question 5. What makes the vehicle in the picture environmentally friendly? Give one answer. A. It's powered by diesel. B. It's powered by electricity. C. It's powered by gravity. D. It's powered by unleaded petrol. The correct answer is B. It's powered by electricity. Explanation. Trams are powered by electricity and therefore don't emit exhaust fumes. They ease traffic congestion by offering drivers an alternative to using their car, particularly in busy cities and towns. Question 6. What should the driver of the car approaching the crossing do? Give one answer. A. Continue at the same speed. B. Drive through quickly. C. Slow down and get ready to stop. D. Sound the horn. The correct answer is C. Slow down and get ready to stop. Explanation. Look well ahead to see whether any hazards are developing. This will give you more time to deal with them in the correct way. The man in the picture is clearly intending to cross the road. You should be traveling at a speed that allows you to check your mirror, slow down and stop in good time. You shouldn't have to brake harshly. Question 7. Why do motorcyclists often look round over their right shoulder just before turning right? Give one answer. A. 
it helps them balance as they turn. B. Motorcycles don't have mirrors. C. To check for traffic in their blind area. D. To listen for traffic behind them. The correct answer is C, to check for traffic in their blind area. Explanation, when you see a motorcyclist take a glance over their shoulder, they're probably about to change direction. Recognizing a clue like this helps you to anticipate their next action. This can improve road safety for you and others. Question 8. You're about to overtake a slow-moving motorcyclist. Which sign would make you take special care, give one answer. A. B. C. D. The correct answer is A. Explanation, in windy weather, watch out for motorcyclists and also cyclists, as they can be blown sideways into your path. When you pass them, leave plenty of room and check their position in your mirror before pulling back in. Question 9. You're approaching a mini roundabout. What should you do if a long vehicle in front signals left but positions over to the right, give one answer. A. Follow the same course as the lorry. B. Keep well back. C. Overtake on the left. D. Sound your horn. The correct answer is B. Keep well back. Explanation, at many roundabouts, there isn't much room for a long vehicle to maneuver. It will have to swing out wide so that it can complete the turn safely. Keep well back and don't try to move up alongside it. Question 10. You're driving on a single carriageway road. Why should you keep well back while you're following a large vehicle? Give one answer. A. To get the best view of the road ahead. B. To give yourself acceleration space if you decide to overtake. C. To leave a gap in case the vehicle stops and rolls back. D. To offer other drivers a safe gap if they want to overtake you. The correct answer is A. To get the best view of the road ahead. Explanation. When following a large vehicle, keep well back. If you're too close, you won't be able to see the road ahead, and the driver of the long vehicle might not be able to see you in their mirrors. Question 11. Which road users benefit from toucan crossings? Give one answer. A. Bus and lorry drivers. B. Car drivers and motorcyclists. C. Cyclists and pedestrians. D. Tram and train drivers. The correct answer is C, cyclists and pedestrians. Explanation, toucan crossings are similar to pelican crossings but there's no flashing amber phase. Cyclists share the crossing with pedestrians and are allowed to cycle across when the green cycle symbol is shown. Question 12. What does this sign mean? Give one answer. A. Cycle in single file. B. Cycle route ahead. C. Cycles aren't allowed. D. Cyclists must dismount. The correct answer is B. Cycle route ahead. Explanation. Where there's a cycle route ahead, a sign will show a bicycle in a red warning triangle. Watch out for children on bicycles and cyclists rejoining the main road. Question 13. Which sign means there's a double bend ahead? Give one answer. A. B. C. D. The correct answer is B. Explanation. Triangular signs give you a warning of hazards ahead. They are there to give you time to prepare for the hazard, for example, by adjusting your speed. Question 14. What does this sign mean? Give one answer. A. Entrance to tunnel. B. Hump bridge. C. Humps in the road. D. Soft verges. The correct answer is C. Humps in the road. 
Explanation, these humps have been put in place to slow the traffic down. They're usually found in residential areas. Slow down to an appropriate speed. Question 15. Which sign means the end of a dual carriageway? Give one answer. A. B. C. D. The correct answer is D. Explanation, if you're overtaking, make sure you move back safely into the left-hand lane before you reach the end of the dual carriageway. Question 16. What does this sign mean? Give one answer. A. No through road. B. T junction. C. Telephone box ahead. D. Toilet ahead. The correct answer is A. No through road. Explanation. You won't be able to find a through route to another road. Use this road only for access. Question 17. Which is the sign for a ring road? Give one answer. A. B. C. D. The correct answer is C. Explanation. Ring roads are designed to relieve congestion in towns and city centers. Question 18. Why does this junction have a stop sign and a stop line on the road? Give one answer. A. It's a busy junction. B. Speed on the major road is dear strict. C. The junction is on a downhill gradient. D. Visibility along the major road is restricted. The correct answer is D. Visibility along the major road is restricted. Explanation, where emerging traffic has a very restricted view of the main road, you may find a stop sign and a solid white stop line. You must stop at the line and then check carefully before you emerge. Question 19. You're approaching a junction where the traffic lights aren't working. What should you do when a police officer gives the signal? Give one answer. A. Continue ahead only. B. Stop at the stop line. C. Turn left only. D. Turn right only. The correct answer is B. Stop at the stop line. Explanation. When a police officer or traffic warden is directing traffic, you must obey them. They'll use the arm signals shown in the highway code. Learn what these signals mean and obey them. Question 20. What does this arm signal mean? Give one answer. A. The driver intends to turn left. B. The driver intends to turn right. C. The driver is slowing down. D. The driver wishes to overtake. The correct answer is A. The driver intends to turn left. Explanation. There might be an occasion where another driver uses an arm signal. This may be because the vehicle's indicators are obscured by other traffic. In order for such signals to be effective, all drivers should know their meaning. Be aware that the left turn signal might look similar to the slowing down signal. Question 21. Which sign means that the national speed limit applies? Give one answer. A. B. C. D. The correct answer is D. Explanation. You should know the speed limit for the road on which you're traveling and the vehicle that you're driving. The different speed limits are shown in the highway code. Question 22. What should you do when going through a contraflow system on a motorway? Give one answer. A. Keep a good distance from the vehicle ahead. B. Stay close to the vehicle ahead to reduce cues. C. Switch lanes to keep the traffic flowing. D. Use dipped headlights. The correct answer is A. Keep a good distance from the vehicle ahead. Explanation. At roadworks, and especially where a contraflow system is operating, a speed restriction is likely to be in place. Keep to the lower speed limit and don't switch lanes to get too close to the vehicle in front of you, 
be aware that there will be no permanent barrier between you and the oncoming traffic. Question 23. What should you do before slowing down or stopping your vehicle? Give one answer. A. Flash the headlights. B. Select a higher gear. C. Sound a horn. D. Use the mirrors. The correct answer is D. Use the mirrors. Explanation. Before slowing down or stopping, check the mirrors to see what's happening behind you. Also assess what's ahead and make sure you give the correct signal if it will help other road users. Question 24. What's the reason for the hatched area along the center of this road? Give one answer. A. It marks an area to be used by overtaking motorcyclists. B. It separates the two sides of the dual carriageway. C. It separates traffic flowing in opposite directions. D. It's a temporary marking to warn of the roadworks. The correct answer is C. It separates traffic flowing in opposite directions. Explanation. Areas of hatched markings such as these separate traffic streams that could be a danger to each other, they're often seen on bends or where the road becomes narrow. If the area is bordered by a solid white line, you mustn't enter it except in an emergency. Question 25. The conditions are good and dry. When should you use the two-second rule? Give one answer. A. Before restarting the engine after it has stalled. B. Before using the mirrors, signal, maneuver routine. C. When checking your gap from the vehicle in front. D. When traffic lights change to green. The correct answer is C, when checking your gap from the vehicle in front. Explanation, in good conditions, the two-second rule can be used to check the distance between your vehicle and the one in front. This technique works on roads carrying faster traffic. Choose a fixed object, such as a bridge, sign, or tree. When the vehicle ahead passes this object, say to yourself, only a fool breaks the two-second rule. If you reach the object before you finish saying this, you're too close. Question 26. You're driving on a three-lane motorway. How should you overtake a slow-moving lorry in the middle lane if it's showing this sign? Give one answer. A. Approach with care and overtake on the left of the lorry. B. Cautiously approach the lorry then overtake on either side. C. Follow the lorry until you can leave the motorway. D. Use the right-hand lane and overtake the lorry normally. The correct answer is A. Approach with care and overtake on the left of the lorry. Explanation. This sign is found on slow-moving or stationary works vehicles. If you wish to overtake it, do so on the left, as indicated. Be aware that there might be workmen in the area. Question 27. A driver's behavior has upset you. How can you get over this incident safely? Give one answer. A. Follow them, flashing your headlights. B. Gesture to them with your hand. C. Shout abusive language. D. Stop and take a break. The correct answer is D. Stop and take a break. Explanation. If you feel yourself becoming tense or upset, stop in a safe place and take a break. Tiredness can make things worse and may cause a different reaction to upsetting situations. Question 28. What should you do if you want to overtake a long slow moving vehicle on a busy road? Give one answer. A. Flash your headlights for the oncoming traffic to give way. B. Follow it closely and keep moving out to see the road ahead. C. Keep well back so that you get a good view of the road ahead. D. Stay behind until the driver waves you past. The correct answer is C. Keep well back so that you get a good view of the road ahead. 
Explanation, when you're following a long vehicle, stay well back so that you can get a better view of the road ahead. The closer you get, the less you'll be able to see of the road. Be patient and don't take a gamble. Only overtake when you're certain that you can complete the maneuver safely. Question 29. What must you do when you see this sign? Give one answer. A. Stop even if the road is clear. B. Stop only if a red light is showing. C. Stop only if children are waiting to cross. D. Stop only if traffic is approaching. The correct answer is A. Stop even if the road is clear. Explanation. Stop signs are situated at junctions where visibility is restricted or where there's heavy traffic. They must be obeyed, you must stop. Look carefully before moving off. Question 30. You've stopped at a railway level crossing. What should you do if the red lights continue to flash after a train has gone by? Give one answer. A. Alert drivers behind you. B. Phone the signal operator. C. Proceed with caution. D. Wait. The correct answer is D. Wait. Explanation. You must always obey red flashing stop lights. If a train passes but the lights continue to flash, another train will be passing soon. Cross only when the lights go off and the barriers open. Question 31. You're at an incident. What could you do to help an unconscious casualty? Give one answer. A. Check that they're breathing normally. B. Move them to somewhere more comfortable. C. Splash their face with cool water. D. Take photographs of the scene. The correct answer is A. Check that they're breathing normally. Explanation, if a casualty is unconscious, you need to check that they're breathing normally. Look for chest movements, look and listen for breathing, and feel for breath on your cheek. Question 32. You arrive at an incident. There's no danger from fire or further collisions and the emergency services have been called. What's your first priority when attending to an unconscious motorcyclist? Give one answer. A. Check whether they have any broken bones. B. Check whether they have any bruising. C. Check whether they're bleeding. D. Check whether they're breathing normally. The correct answer is D. Check whether they're breathing normally. Explanation. At the scene of an incident, always be aware of danger from further collisions or fire. The first priority when dealing with an unconscious person is to ensure they can breathe. This may involve clearing their airway if you can see an obstruction or if they're having difficulty breathing. Question 33. You're behind this cyclist. When the traffic lights change, what should you do? Give one answer. A. Allow the cyclist time and room. B. Tap your horn and drive through first. C. Try to move off before the cyclist. D. Turn right but give the cyclist room. The correct answer is A. Allow the cyclist time and room. Explanation. Hold back and allow the cyclist to move off. Some junctions have special areas marked across the front of the traffic lane. These allow cyclists to wait for the lights to change and move off ahead of other traffic. Question 34. Why should you reduce your speed here? Give one answer. A. A low bridge is ahead. B. A stagger junction is ahead. C. The road narrows ahead. D. The road surface changes ahead. The correct answer is B. A stagger junction is ahead. Explanation. Traffic could be turning off or pulling out ahead of you, to the left or right. Vehicles turning left will be slowing down before the junction, 
and any vehicles turning right may have to stop to allow oncoming traffic to clear. Be prepared for this, as you might have to slow down or stop behind them. Question 35. What must you do if your ability to drive is impaired during a period of illness? Give one answer. A. See your doctor each time before you drive. B. Stop driving until you're fit to drive again. C. Take all your medicines with you when you drive. D. Take smaller doses of any medicines. The correct answer is B. Stop driving until you're fit to drive again. Explanation, only drive if you're fit to do so. Driving when you're ill or taking some medicines can affect your concentration and judgment. It may also cause you to become drowsy or even fall asleep. Question 36. Which road users are most difficult to see when you're reversing your car? Give one answer. A. Car drivers. B. Children. C. Cyclists. D. Motorcyclists. The correct answer is B. Children. Explanation, it may not be possible to see a small child through the rear windscreen of your vehicle. Be aware of this before you reverse. If there are children about, get out and check that it's clear before reversing. Question 37. You want to turn right from a junction. What should you do if your view is restricted by parked vehicles? Give one answer. A. Move out quickly but be prepared to stop. B. Sound your horn and pull out if there's no reply. C. Stop, get out and look along the main road to check. D. Stop, then move forward slowly until you have a clear view. The correct answer is D. Stop, then move forward slowly until you have a clear view. Explanation. If you want to turn right from a junction and your view is restricted, stop. Ease forward until you can see, something might be approaching. If you don't know, don't go. Question 38. A single carriageway road has this sign. What's the maximum permitted speed for a car towing a trailer? Give one answer. A. 30 miles per hour. B. 40 miles per hour. C. 50 miles per hour. D. 60 miles per hour. The correct answer is C. 50 miles per hour. Explanation. When you're towing a trailer, a reduced speed limit also applies on dual carriageways and motorways. These lower speed limits apply to vehicles pulling all sorts of trailers, including caravans and horse boxes. Question 39. You're driving with your front fog lights switched on. What should you do if the fog has cleared? Give one answer. A. Drive with them on instead of your headlights. B. Flash them to warn oncoming traffic that it's foggy. C. Leave them on if other drivers have their lights on. D. Switch them off as long as visibility remains good. The correct answer is D. Switch them off as long as visibility remains good. Explanation. Switch off your fog lights if the weather improves, but be prepared to use them again if visibility reduces to less than 100 meters, 328 feet. Question 40. You're driving along a wet road. How can you tell if your vehicle's tires are losing their grip on the surface? Give one answer. A. The engine noise will increase. B. The engine will stall. C. The steering will feel very heavy. D. The steering will feel very light. The correct answer is D. The steering will feel very light. Explanation. If you drive at speed in very wet conditions, your steering may suddenly feel lighter than usual. This means that the tires have lifted off the surface of the road and are floating on the surface of the water. This is known as aquaplaning. 
reduce speed but don't brake until your steering returns to normal. Question 41. You're driving on this dual carriageway. Why may you need to slow down, give one answer. A. There are no footpaths. B. There are roadworks ahead of you. C. There are solid white lines on either side. D. There's a broken white line in the center. The correct answer is B. There are roadworks ahead of you. Explanation. Look well ahead and read any road signs as you drive. They're there to inform you of what's ahead. In this case, you may need to slow down and change direction. Check your mirrors so you know what's happening around you before you change speed or direction. Question 42. Which lights must you use if you're driving on a well-lit motorway at night? Give one answer. A. Use front fog lights. B. Use only your side lights. C. Use rear fog lights. D. Use your headlights. The correct answer is D. Use your headlights. Explanation. If you're driving on a motorway at night or in poor visibility, you must always use your headlights, even if the road is well lit. Other road users must be able to see you, but you should avoid causing dazzle. Question 43. You're driving at night with your headlights on main beam. A vehicle is overtaking you. When should you dip your headlights, give one answer. A. As soon as the vehicle passes you. B. Before the vehicle starts to pass you. C. Only if the other driver dips their headlights. D. Sometime after the vehicle has passed you. The correct answer is A, as soon as the vehicle passes you. Explanation, on main beam, your lights could dazzle the driver in front. Dip your headlights as soon as the driver passes you and drop back so that the dipped beam falls short of the vehicle in front. Question 44. When may you drive a car in this bus lane, give one answer. A. Outside its hours of operation. B. To get to the front of a traffic queue. C. To overtake slow moving traffic. D. You may not use it at any time. The correct answer is A. Outside its hours of operation. Explanation. Some bus lanes operate only during peak hours and other vehicles may use them outside these hours. Make sure you check the sign for the hours of operation before driving in a bus lane. Question 45. What's likely to happen if you use a hands-free phone while you're driving? Give one answer. A. It will divert your attention. B. It will improve your safety. C. It will increase your concentration. D. It will reduce your view. The correct answer is A. It will divert your attention. Explanation. Talking to someone while you're driving can distract you and unlike when someone is in the car with you, the person on the other end of a mobile phone is unable to see the traffic situations you're dealing with. They won't stop speaking to you even if you're approaching a hazardous situation. You need to concentrate on your driving at all times. Question 46. How can you reduce the chances of your car being broken into when leaving it unattended? Give one answer. A. Park near a fire station. B. Park near a taxi rank. C. Place any valuables on the floor. D. Take all valuables with you. The correct answer is D. Take all valuables with you. Explanation. When leaving your car, take all valuables with you if you can. Otherwise, lock them out of sight. Question 47. Your vehicle breaks down on a motorway and you manage to stop on the hard shoulder. What should you do if you use your mobile phone to call for help? Give one answer. A. 
check your location from the nearest marker posts beside the hard shoulder. B. Phone a friend and ask them to come and collect you. C. Stand at the rear of the vehicle while making the call. D. Wait in the car for the emergency services to arrive. The correct answer is A. Check your location from the nearest marker posts beside the hard shoulder. Explanation, you should use an emergency telephone when you break down on the motorway, only use your mobile if this isn't possible. The emergency services need to know your exact location so they can reach you as quickly as possible. Look for a number on the nearest marker post beside the hard shoulder. Give this number when you call the emergency services. Question 48. You're parked in a busy high street. What's the safest way to turn your vehicle around so you can drive in the opposite direction? Give one answer. A. Ask someone to stop the traffic. B. Carry out a U-turn. C. Drive into a side road and reverse out into the main road. D. Turn around in a quiet side road. The correct answer is D. Turn around in a quiet side road. Explanation. Make sure you carry out the maneuver without causing a hazard to other vehicles. Choose a place to turn that's safe and considers other road users. Question 49. How can you make sure that a satellite navigation, SATNAV, system doesn't distract you when you're driving, give one answer. A. Choose a voice that you find calming. B. Only set the destination when you're lost. C. Set it before starting your journey. D. Turn it off while you're driving in built-up areas. The correct answer is C. Set it before starting your journey. Explanation. Satnavs can be useful when driving on unfamiliar routes. However, they can also distract you and cause you to lose control if you look at or adjust them while you're driving. Set the satnav before starting your journey, or pull up in a safe place before making any changes to it. Question 50. What's the legal minimum tread depth for tires on your trailer or caravan? Give one answer. A. 1 mm. B. 1.6 mm. C. 2 mm. D. 2.6 mm. The correct answer is B. 1.6 mm. Explanation. Trailers and caravans may be left in storage over the winter months, and tires can deteriorate. It's important to check their tread depth and also their pressures and general condition. The legal tread depth of 1.6 mm applies to the central three quarters of a tire's breadth, over its entire circumference. Please don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe to support this channel. Thank you for watching and good luck for your test.